as I've heard from my father as well, she also tried to sell me for crack. Wow. When I was young, young. Like, a baby, baby. Yeah. Hmm. Drugs really get to your head. Welcome back, and today's episode is with Jada. We had a few technical difficulties during this episode, so it's kind of short, but this one is a child's perspective of being raised by addicts. How does that shape her life? How does the resentments come up later on in life if they do at all? And most importantly, why would an addict choose addiction over top of raising their own child? All these things are questions I feel like children and addicts should have um, if you're around addiction. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Many thanks go out to Jada for sitting through this episode. I know it was pretty warm. So thank you for sitting there as long as you did. And uh, let's get into this episode of Chopping It Up. It's a cool little setup here. It has taken me months to make it like this and several thousand dollars. But I like it. I think it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a nice little setup. I enjoy talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they do make me cry. Well, hopefully I don't make you cry. So, Jada, thanks for coming. I don't have my little clipper board, or I would have did my little clapper board for you, <laughs> but I don't have my marker. So, anyways, you drove all the way up here. Yes, uh, I did. Okay, why did you want to come on? Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us your name. Tell us your age. Like, My name's Jada. Um, I live in Monroe right now. I drove down here about like 45 to an hour drive. I'm 22. I'm about to be 23. My birthday is in about a week, the 29th. I'm mm -hmm. very excited, even mm -hmm. though... Not really much of a difference. <laughs> right. Um, I have two dogs and a boyfriend in my own house. Okay. It's great. Okay. And we're in North Carolina right now, just for everybody that doesn't know, because normally I'm in Virginia. So we're yeah. in North Carolina. Um, well, this is South Carolina. South Sea again. Dude, I did that on the last one. I'm such a horrible person. <laughs> so this is South Carolina, Pineville, South Carolina, but I live in Monroe, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah. So you wanted to come on because you have addicted parents, right? You grew up with addicted parents? Yes, I did. Okay, and you wanted to talk about how that kind of shaped your life? Yeah, I think a lot of my troubles growing up came from having addicts as parents with anxiety and depression, having to see that growing up in my life. So when I was about five years old, I got my dad got full custody of me because my mom was a psychopath. <laughs> Basically, what happened with that is... My mom likes to do meth. To this day, she still does meth. And my mom and dad got into it a lot because of the drugs. And I will say my dad did some as well. Not mm -hmm. meth, not anything crazy like that. But he was doing cocaine and, I guess, clashing all the time with her. Like, she would get angry and she would put a gun to his head and shoot holes through our refrigerator. And then there's some times when that would happen. He'd put a gun to her head and say he was going to pull the trigger and blow her brains out. How, like, how old are you when this is happening? I'm about five, four or five. And you still remember all that? I don't really remember remember it, but my dad's told me stories. Okay. Of, like, because I can see bits and pieces in my mind of what it looked like, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I can't really tell it, like, from seeing it at the same time. Okay. Right, so the story's kind of re, yeah. re put it in your head. Yeah, and I, I, I could have like a clear vision in my mind of where the living room was and like the bedrooms and see them going in the room and things mm -hmm. like that, but I don't really remember, remember. But I do remember her shooting a hole through the refrigerator because she was mad with a gun. It's pretty bit, pretty insane. And I do remember uh, my grandpa getting there, like my mom's dad. I don't know his name, I just remember what he looks like in my mind. He got there and tried to shoot my dad too. And my dad just tackled them both. That okay. was one thing I really remember about how toxic the relationship was. And so from that point on, my dad decided that he was going to get full custody of me because my mother was an insane and she tried to kidnap me and run away with me. And as I've heard from my father as well, she also tried to sell me for crack. Wow. When I was young, young. Like a baby, baby. Yeah. Hmm. Drugs really get to your head. So, how's your relationship with mom and dad now? My relationship with my dad is amazing. He's my best friend. Okay. But I don't talk to my mother. I haven't talked to her in years. Okay, so what was the end of that relationship? Like, mom and dad are together when you're younger, and then where do mom and dad split up and kind of... Well, I, um, like I was saying, my dad got full custody of me when I was five because she tried to kidnap me, and they tried the joint custody thing, and she would never bring me back and try to run away with me, so he eventually got full custody of me. 
Okay. And a story to add on to that I have is um, I do remember this very, very vaguely. Or vividly. Okay, yeah. That's, Viv- I, think I, rem- that, I think that's what we I remember want. this very vividly. They're both Vs, man. It's okay. <laughs> um, we were stopping at a gas station in Rock Hill. He was going in to get a drink, whatever, and I was like five, six years old. And it was one of those trucks that it doesn't have a back seat. It's just window, window, and that middle window. Mm-hmm. And we were pulling out the gas station, and she jumped on the back of the truck. Like, just came out of nowhere and jumped on the back of the truck. And try to ride down the road to try to kidnap me through the truck while the truck was moving. Hmm. Like, trying try to pull you from that yeah, window. Yeah, try to kick it in the middle window. And my dad was trying to do donuts to throw her ass off. And Wow, mom was wilding. And then she stayed on her the whole way to my house. And then she ran from the cops because my dad called the cops. So she tried, like, uh, it's so <laughs> confusing. Like, uh, I'm going to take my daughter and sell her for crack. But mm-hmm. here I am years later and I'm kicking your window and trying to get her back. Yeah, it like, doesn't really make sense. It doesn't, does it? No, <laughs> I do remember that. I was so scared, but yeah, she just ran as soon as we got back to the house. Hmm. So your relationship moves forward with your dad. You stay with your dad. He yeah. stops using. So I, um, he wasn't really using that I know of in between that time period. But my dad also has had about four back surgeries, and I think after his last back surgery, which was, I'm gonna say like probably like 10 years ago he started getting addicted to pain pills Mm. also having low blood sugar so sometimes it was hard to like see if he's passing out from pills or if he was passing out from low blood sugar Mm. and i've had a lot of anxiety about that growing up seeing him as an addict just passed out on the couch or him slurring his words being mean without knowing he's being mean Mm -hmm. wondering if he's gonna be alive when he gets back home driving a vehicle like that And I do remember one time when he had a seizure. I think that was the trigger of my anxiety. He had a seizure right in front of me, and I didn't know how to react. And I couldn't call the cops because he had a warrant for his arrest. So I had to come back inside and just slap him until he woke up. And he had no idea he just had a seizure. He was just like, why are you slapping me? Hmm. And I don't know. He was was diagnosed with um, severe, like, seizures. So I don't know if that was caused by pain bills or what that was caused by, but... Never any barbiturates, just pain pills, though? Never, like, Valiums or Xanax or anything like that, you remember? No, it was and not no meth or cocaine or right. heroin, nothing like that. The only reason I say that is sometimes the benzodiazepines will cause the seizures. Yeah, I don't know. I, the doctor just, um, even, I think he had us, before he went to prison, he had, um, he was having seizures, but it wasn't due to pain pills. Hmm. But then it could have been. I don't really know exactly. Right. But he's on seizure medication now, mm-hmm. thank God, mm-hmm. so... Hmm. So how's he doing now? Has he? You said he's cleaned up completely. Yes, he's cleaned up completely. Okay. He's all committed to God. Like he going through prison. I think he found himself a lot, and God definitely laid his hands on him and took okay. care of him and helped him find his way. So prison was during your lifetime. Mm-hmm. Like, how old were you when that happened? He went to prison. He turned himself in when I was sixteen. Okay. And how long did he do? Almost two years. Four. Four. He got caught with. He was driving without a license, okay. and he missed his court date okay. from something else, and he was caught with narcotics. But those were those charges were dropped because he had proof of it all. Mm. But yeah, and that changed his life. Yes. So he switched everything around. Sometimes some consequences are what it takes. Yeah, like a humble. He, he was humbled by God, is what I like to say. Okay. And ever since then, he's been a different person. He's still insane and angry, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, that's where I get it from. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how how do you feel like a lot of that has shaped the way you deal with life now? Like, were you educated when you were young enough? Did you understand what was going on with the drugs and things? Yeah, I, I understood. And I think that I feel like I understood to a certain extent because I was young. But mm. when I started, like, getting higher in the teens, I really was like, okay, why is someone doing this and making them this way? Like, I don't understand. And that's where my anxiety stemmed from, too. Like, seeing my dad like that, wondering if that was going to be his last time talking to me. And there was times that I've seen him try to kill himself. That was really traumatizing. And I just think a lot of my anxiety stems from those situations. Hmm. So what do you do to deal with that? Like, how do you deal with are you, medications, therapy? I'm medicated. Okay. I tried therapy for a little bit, but then I just stopped going. 
And I think being on, I'm on Zoloft. I think being on Zoloft helps my mind stop racing all the time about certain mm-hmm. things. Like, like making sure I don't worry about things that I can't control. Mm-hmm. Like you can't change the fact of things that already happened and you can't change what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Just try to stay positive. It's the best way I try to look at it. Right. So what do you do now? Like as far as, uh, Take me through a day. Take me through one of your days. How, what's your day look like? So my days right now, I just started a new job for a dealership. It's work at home. So usually I get up. I have me a good breakfast. I play with my dogs because they're my whole world. And I log on and make some phone calls. And when I get done, I like to go to the gym. I think going to the gym helps me a lot, too, with anxiety and anger. Try to push myself to be better every day. Mm -hmm. And then coming home, eating a very good meal, and going to sleep. And my zen, I would like to say, is watching Netflix. Okay, what do you like on Netflix? Watching Netflix. I like Legacies, Vampire Diaries, and the Originals. Okay, yeah. All my favorites. Into that vampire stuff, Mm -hmm. huh? I also do, like, reality TV. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Yeah, man. uh, I feel like there's so many things that, uh, through our childhood, that shape what we do. And and sometimes uh, we would do the same thing, like use the drugs, too. You never wanted to just fit in or you felt like they're doing this. It's fun. I want to do it, too. Um, No, not really. I mean, growing up, all I ever did was smoke weed. Okay. That's the only thing I ever did. Do you still smoke? No. No, not at all. I feel like I was laced, so I stopped. Oh, okay. So you had a scare. Oh, yeah. So one thing that we definitely push the most about this channel is that you can get out of addiction and go out and see the world. Look around, look where we are. It wasn't long ago we were in jails and prisons. And now look at this beautiful countryside that we're able to go up through. So don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Hopefully you're enjoying this episode. I won't keep you much longer. Let's get back to it. What happened there? I smoked one night with my friend. This is when I was like 16. And my heart started racing out my chest and everything was like slow motion, but it didn't make sense. Mm. I felt like I could run a marathon, but it, that's not how you're supposed to feel on weed. I feel like you're like more laid back and chilled and it did not feel like that at all. And I was like drawing on my walls with deodorant sticks and I was, I was not in the right mind. <laughs> and no one else felt the same way or? No, my friend did. Okay. Friend but no did. one like, cause I just had a person to go through the same thing. They smoked with someone with them and they had boot on it. And boots like bath salts or something. And he lost his mind, tripped out for like six hours. But he didn't know it was on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, me and a group of girls got it. And we bought it from someone that we never met before. Hmm. And I don't know if that was a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the girls were okay. But me and my friend were not okay. Hmm. So not everybody got the same effects. Yeah. That's why it was really trippy. Right. Because I was smoking weed every day at that point. So I was like, I know I have a tolerance. Right. I know what this is supposed to feel like. And this is not right. And that was it for you. He's like, I'm done. Yep. I've smoked on and off a little bit, but. Right. So now you just like to. What I do you like do? To what drink. do you like to drink? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, re- I honestly kind of feel like in my life as well right now that I like to have fun a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, like on the weekdays, I like to have an everyday routine, but then on the weekends, I like to let loose. Mm-hmm. And people say, hey, well, you know, alcohol isn't the best way to go through, but I'm like, well, we only live once. So. Mm-hmm. As long as it doesn't become a problem, yeah. right? Where it's taking your whole paycheck or you're not yeah. getting to work, things like that. That comes yeah. ridiculous. Right. I'm not an alcoholic, but I do like alcohol. Right. Well, <laughs> that is definitely a thing. People do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I've never been an alcoholic either. Like, I have a, probably a beer almost every day, but I wouldn't consider myself an alcoholic because mm-hmm. I guess the way I paint alcoholic is someone that is drunk. And I rarely ever get drunk. Yeah. I will. I like to get drunk. So, like, weekends. your weekends are, are full of bar hopping and, and <laughs> Yeah, like, the drinks. day I'll just be relaxing, having a good time. Okay. It depends on where I'm at, too. Like, if I'm just home, then no, not really. I'll just chill out the house and vibe. But if I'm going out, I'm getting drunk. Do you feel like any part of, like, let's just say, for example, mom and dad had these little habits that they had. There's a hereditary part of it that would make you want to use. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's true? Do you ever feel like be. sometimes there might be an issue with what you've done? There could be. I mean, I, maybe sometimes I have drank to help ease pain. Mm-hmm. I will admit to that, but I don't take it as a habit. Mm-hmm. Not doing it often enough to see it as a habit, right? Mm-hmm. Once a week is not terrible. Twice a week. 
Okay. On weekends. <laughs> but it's like every weekend. Yeah, it is. That's good. Though. As long as you're still like, I mean, some people can party and have fun, man, and not go all the way crazy. Yeah. But uh, sometimes I have gone crazy. Yeah, right? You seem yeah. like you could probably go a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in, my, it's in my blood. Okay. My Also, my mother was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I don't know if that has something to do with it, of why I can flip a switch so fast. Okay. I might have like a mild mood disorder. I was never diagnosed with one, mm -hmm. but. So what do you mean by that? Like you're just, things are going fine and then mm -hmm. something just snaps and now you're instantly angry. Yeah. It's like a trigger. And what's that look like for you? Like. It's just like, I get so mad, like I can feel my blood boiling. Mm -hmm. But. Get, that's one of the reasons why I got on Zoloft, too, was from anxiety and because I was acting, like, psychotic. And it calmed you down. Yeah, it calmed me down a lot. Okay. Well, that's awesome, man. I'm mm -hmm. glad you came through. Like, uh, I mean, is, is, is there anything you would want to say to everyone out there that's listening, like, something that you learned that you would want to pass along? Yeah, um, to anybody who also has dealt with the same things, have an addict as parents, like you don't have to be like them no one you have your own life that your past doesn't define you as a person and that you can always overcome things by therapy i don't recommend drinking to overcome your problems mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know if you're just doing it to have a good time with your friends and there's no harm by that but also what helps me too is i used to have a journal writing down things okay. getting my feelings out and then just crumbling up and throwing it away kind of like i'm getting rid of the feeling of not feeling like I was okay. So that's also helped me a lot. Taking it all and putting it there and then making trash out of it. Yeah. Dumping it off. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I can see that working. But drugs aren't the answer to anything. No, they're definitely not. Unless you're prescribing like me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and even then, I feel like some of the things are a little bit overdone. Um, like right now they're prescribing gabapentin left and right to it seems like just about everybody. Gabapentin. Isn't yeah. that a pain pill? Yeah, it well, they just they just made it like a schedule five or something narcotic, but it's like a nerve medicine and they prescribe it for restless leg syndromes or I, I was giving that to my dog a few weeks ago. Yes, and they definitely give it to animals in very small doses. Yeah. Yeah. So but they've know. just been prescribing it a lot lately and I don't know. I just don't I don't like the the big pharma type mm -hmm. of thing. You know what I mean? But I've been an addict most of my life, and I know it's like to be under a thumb of something that you need every day. Yeah. But if it's something that makes you feel better every single day, like, go for it, right? Like, if you're talking about something that keeps you from kirking out, mm -hmm. you need that, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, sure. I do eventually want to get off Zoloft, mm -hmm. but last time I tried getting off Zoloft, I kind of started freaking out more. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's time for me to do that yet right well whenever you're ready yeah it's just like any any addict that's addicted to coke crack meth or anything like that they're not going to stop till they want to yeah or they're ready or there's a problem and if you're not seeing a problem with it you know what i'm saying yeah, it's not I'm taking a... your money not losing your house you're not selling your car <laughs> like right because yeah. that's what a real drug addict does yeah. is we sell those things i don't think you're a drug addict when it's not destroying your life in those ways depression and anxiety does run in my family a lot because my mother had that as well, and my dad is, has that. He is on um, Prozac, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's whenever I have problems also, going to my dad, who has been through everything I've been through with anxiety, he helps me out a lot with it. So that's still a strong relationship, huh? Yes. How often do you talk? Every day. Really? Multiple times awesome. a day. I wish my daughter would call me every day. <laughs> I'm building a relationship back with her, man, but if I could talk to her every day or get something from her every day, that would just make my every day. Yeah. Me and my dad have been through hell together, but he's my best friend. So what's up, man? That's my good. mom, I don't really care about. Right. Do you feel like you could ever mend that relationship? No. Past the point of no return, huh? Yeah. She tries to mend my, her relationship with my sister, but my sister tries, but there's no point because she always just lets her down. Right. And also threaten to kill her, so. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, mom's a little. Yeah, so I have four other siblings, um, all different baby daddies. Okay. She kind of got around a lot, too. Hmm. Do you talk to them? No. I only talk to my older sister, Jasmine. Um, the other one is with her dad's family, and the other one was put up for adoption. And what, the baby is with my mom. And I don't know how that's working out for him, but I hope the best. Okay. All right. Well, it's getting hot in here, isn't it? 
It's getting a little toasty. It's definitely a little hot. The sun's been beating on us. It's getting a little bit toasty in here. And we're in South Carolina. South Carolina. I said it right that time. Gotta add a twang to it. It's hot down here. (laughs) Right. I noticed you had a little twang. (laughs) Your little twang. So, yeah, man, we'll dip out. But anything else you want to say? You want to drop a link? You got a social media? Anything like that you want Um, people to tie into? I have a TikTok. Okay. You want to drop whatever that is so they can come check you out? You don't have to, dude. No, like, I don't know my TikTok name. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. If you have anything to say to Jada, drop it in the comments. And when your video comes out, you could respond to the comment. Yes, with 100%. Wh- whatever you want to put If I in. believe, I think it's like Jada XOXOS, but I don't know for sure. So, yes, so when this video it. comes out, you can definitely tag me in anything. Okay. And if they type that in and it's not your face, it's not you, right? No. I have, it's like a little, it's a picture of like a me and blonde hair and a little ponytail. Okay. All right, so y'all heard her, man. If, if that's the right TikTok, go follow her on TikTok. <laughs> but definitely leave some comments, drop a like. She's adorable as hell sitting there talking to us, man. I appreciate you coming of in course, and sharing your perspective. Um, as a parent, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes for me to hear what I did to my kids because that's what y'all are telling me. Yeah. And I think if other people are out there listening to the same thing from the same perspective, it might give them some education of what they've done. Maybe they can rebuild the same relationships that you've built with your dad and I'm yeah. building with my daughter. Like he let me down growing up a mm-hmm. lot with the addiction to pain pills, not understanding why my dad did that. But now as I see, like he just struggled with addiction and it mm-hmm. took a toll on my mentality. But I see he changed and that's what matters. Right. And you were there to give him another chance. Yeah, my mother did not change, so she will never get a chance. Hmm. Point taken. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, so I appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot. Of course. And uh, y'all know what it is, man. So until the next time, don't sweat the petty things, pet the sweaty things. <laughs> I like that.